There's something magical about driving at night. The peace, the lack of traffic, the cabin illuminated and warm. And the knowledge that, should you wish, by morning you could be in a different world. Tonight we're on England's south coast. By daybreak we could be crossing into the Scottish Highlands. When you drive at night, the possibilities just seem so much more endless. Tonight's jaunt, though, is not about the destination so much as the journey. And so we're going to stay put on what I actually rate as one of the best driving roads in southern England. And we're going to do it in what is, on paper at least, a very special car. Welcome to night driving in the Volkswagen Golf R 20 years. Launched in late 2022, this car marks 20 years since VW's first Golf R, the Mark IV-based R32. It's a limited edition model based on the current Mark VIII, not to mention the most powerful production Golf there's ever been. And it follows what is now a long line of Golf Rs, including the V6 engine Mark V and the four-cylinder Mark VI and Mark VII. You can find lots of examples for these for sale on cargurus.co.uk and our sister site, pistonheads.com. So how powerful is the most powerful Golf there's ever been? Well, it's 328 horsepower, and that's up from 316 horsepower that you get in a standard Golf R. Now, of course, these sorts of power figures have come an awfully long way in 20 years. Take hypercars, for example. 20 years ago, a top-end hypercar, what, a Carrera GT, a Pagani Zonda, 600 to 800 horsepower. Today, you've got Bugatti Chirons and Rimax with twice that. And so in that context, actually, a Golf horsepower has not come on as far as you might think. The Golf R32, 20 years ago, made 240 horsepower and it could get from 0 to 62 in 6.4 seconds. This 20 years model will cover the same benchmark sprint in 4.6 seconds, which is an indication of how effectively it deploys those 328 horses. Like the R32, it's four-wheel drive, but technology has moved on. This car features VW's latest four motion system, which not only distributes drive between the front and rear axles, but thanks to torque vectoring, can also send up to 100% of the rear axles torque to the outside wheel when cornering for added agility. It also has VW's performance pack for the R as standard, so that includes the rear wing, it has a top speed de-restricted to 168 miles per hour, and it includes a couple of additional driving modes, which we'll come to in a bit. But first I want to talk about another piece of technology that has really progressed in the last 20 years, and that is the headlights. So this car has full LED headlights, um, including the IQ technology, so it can mask other cars as they come towards you so you can stay on full beam and it will allow you to not blind the, the oncoming car which is great very clever piece of technology but actually when you really appreciate good LEDs is in this kind of situation when you're on a brilliant road it's the dead of night completely quiet and with them on full beam it's astonishing As well as its fancy headlights, the 20 years features several bespoke design touches, including unique puddle lamps, lapis blue or black door mirror casings, 19-inch Estoril wheels with black or blue detailing, blue R logos and a 20 logo on the B pillar. Now I'd say that blue detailing is an acquired taste, but all in all, this 20 years is quite restrained really in the styling department, probably as you would expect of a Volkswagen. And it's actually the sort of car that, for the uninitiated, they would probably just assume it was a normal Golf. But, you know, if you know, you know. And that's kind of the point, isn't it? I think there's something quite cool about that. On the inside, the 20 years features the same smattering of R logos as other Golf Rs. Plus, bespoke to this model is a piece of real carbon fibre trim that runs across the dash. The heated and ventilated Nappa leather sports seats are excellent, albeit chunky enough to rob some rear legroom, while a similar compromise comes from the addition of that huge rear wing, because it makes the boot unusually heavy to open. Frankly, I couldn't really give a stuff about losing a bit of rear legroom or the tailgate being a bit heavier to lift, because if I cared about those sorts of things, then I would probably buy a normal Golf. 
But then if I bought a normal Golf, I wouldn't be out at 11 o'clock at night driving just for the sake of it, because it wouldn't be fun. But fun, well, this is certainly fun. But what is it that makes it fun? Because actually one of the things about the Golf R that's so great is its breadth of ability. So if I start going into these driving modes here, and I go into comfort, everything settles down, the ride is quite cushioning. This has got the optional adaptive dampers, but it's fine. It's, it's a very nice everyday car. The engine, it's got power there, but it's a bit lazy. You've got you've to wake it up to get going. But then if you want it to be fun, well, then you press the R button on the steering wheel here and it will flick to race mode. But then it's fun, but actually a bit too firm for British roads. You could have drift mode, and I bet that would be really fun until you stuffed it into a hedge. Or you can have special mode. This mode is set up for the Nürburgring. So what this does is effectively gives you softer damping with everything else set to full attack. And then, well then, the Golf R 20 years becomes really quite an involving car. On the engine front, VW has not only remapped the four-cylinder two-litre turbocharged petrol unit for more power, but has also tinkered with the throttle body and turbo so that they effectively remain primed for action when you lift off the throttle, all with the aim of improving throttle response. Let's talk a bit more about the engine then. Um, to get the extra response that the changes yield, you need to be in either race or special mode, but that's not really a problem because special mode is actually so good that you will probably spend most of your time in it and you really can feel the difference in the response this car coming on and off the throttle i mean it's it's awesome it's really awesome and they've also worked on the gearbox for this so you get punchier shifts in these more extreme drive modes to give a bit more drama a bit more emotion that word actually comes up with this car emotion um, it's almost as if Volkswagen has been perhaps a bit chastened by people saying that the standard Golf R is a bit too grown up, a bit too much of an all-rounder. A bit like McLaren used to be, the cars didn't have emotion, people would say. And so there's other little bits, there's the gearbox being a bit punchier, there's the throttle response, there's also a bit more engine noise uh, once you go above about 4,000 RPM. And there's even a mode emotional start I think it's called which basically when you start the car it holds the engine rev a bit higher around two and a half thousand rpm the idea being it just gives a bit more drama a bit more emotion yes you heard that right and yes it does seem a little bit strange that a brand so heavily invested in electric motoring has also just engineered a mode into one of its ice cars that deliberately burns more fuel than needed but that's sort of the point isn't it because well, let's face it, we're coming to the end of an era for cars like this. And so cars like the Golf R, 20 years, building the most powerful Golf there's ever been, it's a bit like a last roll of the dice, isn't it, for these manufacturers? For, the, for years, these fast cars have allowed them to really demonstrate their emotion, their passion. I mean, let's face it, if Toyota is out there building incredible driver's cars like the GR Yaris and the GR86, then why shouldn't Volkswagen? Why shouldn't everyone? Let's enjoy it while we still can. How about the price? Well, VW charges £48,250 for the R20 years, which is a premium of £5,400 over a standard Golf R. Incredibly, that price doesn't include the dynamic chassis control adaptive dampers either, which are an extra £850, while a reversing camera is another £320. So what we have here is a £50,000 Volkswagen Golf. You probably couldn't have imagined that 20 years ago, could you? But then, I don't know, in 2023, it doesn't sound that crazy in some ways. It's the same price as a Honda Civic Type R, which yes, is a better car in most regards. But still, 50,000 pounds for what you're getting. When you compare it with something like an electric SUV, many of which are 50,000 pounds, I think for the amount of engineering you're getting in one of these 2023 hot hatches, whether it's a Golf R 20 years or a Civic Type R, it almost seems like good value. Well, let's put it like this. You're not likely to be getting in your 50,000 pound electric SUV to go for a drive just for the sake of it, no matter what time of day it is. But in one of these, you are. And it's not just day either. You should be driving them at night and making the most of it.
what would be your perfect night drive? Let us know in the comments, car and location. And remember to like and subscribe to this channel as well as heading to cargurus.co.uk to find great deals on your next car.